Dot. Uncovering the impact of fluorinated chemicals. Diving into the depths of pervasive fluorinated chemicals. As a seasoned science journalist, I've had the privilege of delving into the intricacies of various scientific fields, but the world of per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, PFAS, has truly captured my attention. These ubiquitous chemicals, found in everything from our clothes to our cell phones, have become a pressing environmental concern that demands our collective focus. The recent analysis by O'Carroll and colleagues, published in Nature Geoscience, paints a sobering picture of the PFAS contamination that has seeped into our global water resources. Their comprehensive study, which examined over 45,000 samples from 273 previous studies, reveals that a staggering 32% of groundwater and 16% of surface water samples exceed established regulatory limits worldwide. These findings are particularly alarming, as they suggest that the true extent of PFAS pollution may be far greater than what is currently being monitored. What makes PFAS so pervasive and problematic is their persistence and bioaccumulative nature. The strength of the carbon fluorine bond, a hallmark of these synthetic chemicals, renders them resistant to degradation, allowing them to persist in the environment for decades. As a result, PFAS have become ubiquitous, not only in our water sources but also in the very fabric of our daily lives. The study also highlights the challenges posed by the complex web of PFAS sources and regulatory frameworks. While some PFAS hotspots are linked to known sources, such as firefighting foam, others have an unknown origin, making it increasingly difficult to pinpoint and address the root causes of contamination. Adding to the complexity, the varying regulatory guidelines across different jurisdictions have led to disparate interpretations of PFAS measurements, complicating the management of these chemicals on a global scale. As the world grapples with the dual challenges of water scarcity and the looming PFAS crisis, the need for a comprehensive and coordinated response has never been more urgent. Researchers and policymakers must work together to develop innovative solutions that not only address the historical contamination but also prevent future PFAS releases. This may require a shift in the way we approach PFAS, treating them as a chemical class rather than individual compounds, and establishing universal standards and monitoring protocols. The findings of O'Carroll and colleagues serve as a wake-up call, shedding light on the pervasive nature of PFAS and the pressing need for concerted global action. As we move forward, it will be crucial to expand our understanding of PFAS sources, improve analytical methods to capture the full spectrum of these chemicals, and implement robust regulatory frameworks that protect our precious water resources and safeguard public health. Only then can we truly begin to address the looming PFAS crisis and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Source. www.nature.com. Unveiling the Moon's Mysterious Interior. Unraveling the Lunar Interior, a surprising discovery. In a captivating exploration of the Moon's hidden depths, a team of planetary scientists has uncovered a remarkable revelation that challenges our long-held assumptions about the lunar interior. The findings, published in Nature Geoscience, shed new light on the complex geological history of Earth's celestial companion. Contrary to the widely held belief that we have thoroughly mapped the Moon's surface, the reality is far more intriguing. The Moon's depths, like the ocean's floor, have long been shrouded in mystery, awaiting the keen eye of scientific exploration. It is within these hidden realms that the latest discovery emerges, painting a captivating picture of the moon's formative years. The study, led by researcher Liang Eyal, delves into the data collected by NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory, GRAIL, mission. This groundbreaking endeavor has provided unprecedented insights into the moon's gravitational field, unveiling a series of linear gravity anomalies on the lunar near side. These anomalies, the researchers argue, are the remnants of a crucial geological process that has eluded us for decades. The story begins with the Moon's primordial solidification, a dramatic event that shaped the celestial body's internal structure. As the Moon cooled from its initial molten state, a dense layer of ilmenite bearing cumulates, a mineral-rich sediment, settled beneath the crust. This dense layer, a byproduct of the Moon's magma ocean crystallization, was long hypothesized but lacked physical evidence, until now. Liang and their team have ingeniously pieced together the clues, using a combination of gravity data and numerical simulations. Their analysis reveals that the linear gravity anomalies detected by Grail correspond to the vestiges of this ilmenite bearing cumulate layer, which was once thought to have been completely subsumed into the lunar mantle. 
The researchers propose that a cataclysmic event, the formation of the South Pole Aitken Basin, triggered a convective flow that swept these dense cumulates towards the lunar near side. As the cumulates sank and accumulated at the core mantle boundary, a portion of the layer was preserved underneath the near side crust, leaving behind the linear gravity signatures observed by Grail. This groundbreaking discovery not only provides the first physical evidence for the cumulate overturn paradigm but also has far-reaching implications for our understanding of the Moon's geological history. The timing of this event, constrained by the interruption of the linear anomalies by younger lunar basins, offers a crucial timeline for the Moon's early evolution. The significance of this finding extends beyond the lunar realm, as it sheds light on the formative processes that shaped the terrestrial planets. Magma ocean crystallization and giant impacts are believed to be universal phenomena in the early solar system, though their traces are often more elusive on Earth. As the scientific community eagerly awaits the upcoming Artemis missions, the stage is set for a new era of lunar exploration. Ground-based investigations, including seismology, gravimetry, and electromagnetic techniques, promise to further refine our understanding of the Moon's interior, unlocking the secrets buried beneath its deceptively familiar surface. The recognition of the ilmenite bearing cumulate layers remnants is a testament to the power of interdisciplinary science. By combining geophysical data, numerical simulations, and a deep understanding of lunar geology, the researchers have unveiled a remarkable chapter in the Moon's history, reminding us that we must never judge a planetary body by its cover. Source. www.nature.com. Maximizing transcriptional efficiency. Optimal resource allocation. Unraveling the secrets of transcriptional orchestration, how embryonic cells manage scarce resources. As a seasoned science journalist, I've had the privilege of delving into the captivating world of developmental biology, where the intricate dance of gene regulation unfolds with breathtaking precision. In a groundbreaking study published in Nature Cell Biology, researchers Natalia Steck and Adam Closen have shed new light on the role of transcriptional bodies in managing the limited resources of embryonic cells during the critical process of zygotic genome activation, ZGA. The early stages of embryonic development are marked by a remarkable transformation, as the once silent zygotic genome gradually awakens to orchestrate the complex choreography of life. In zebrafish embryos, this orchestration is primarily driven by the transcription of a multi-copy microRNA, MIR-430, which forms two prominent transcriptional bodies within the nucleus. These transcriptional bodies, brimming with elongating RNA polymerase II, RNA-PII, have long puzzled scientists. While their ubiquity in various model organisms has been well documented, their functional significance has remained elusive as it has been challenging to separate the role of these assemblies from the products they generate. Steck and Klossen's innovative approach has shed new light on this conundrum. By genetically deleting the mere 430 locus in zebrafish embryos, they were able to disrupt the formation of the transcriptional bodies without compromising the overall development of the embryos. This clever experimental design allowed them to explore the broader implications of these enigmatic structures. Through a combination of cutting-edge techniques, including the modified RNA sequencing method ESLAMCQ and live fluorescence microscopy, the researchers unveiled a remarkable discovery. In the absence of the mere 430 transcriptional bodies, several hundred genes that were poised for transcription during ZGA were prematurely activated, leading to a significant disruption in the carefully orchestrated timing of gene expression. The key to this regulation lies in the sequestration of a critical transcriptional elongation factor, CDK9, within the mere 430 transcriptional bodies. By reserving a substantial portion of this essential component, the bodies effectively limit its availability to other genes, preventing their premature activation and ensuring a harmonious unfolding of the zygotic genome. Steck and Klossen's findings suggest that the gene expression machinery is exquisitely sensitive to the availability of regulatory factors and that the formation of these transcriptional bodies serves as a buffer, fine-tuning the timing of ZGA to ensure the proper developmental trajectory. Intriguingly, the absence of the mere 430 transcriptional bodies did not lead to any apparent abnormal phenotype, raising the possibility that this regulatory mechanism may become more relevant under challenging environmental conditions. The authors propose that the sequestration of essential factors within these dynamic nuclear assemblies could be a more widespread phenomenon potentially aiding developmental regulation in various contexts.
As the scientific community continues to unravel the mysteries of nuclear organization and the role of membrane-less organelles, the work of Steck and Closen stands as a testament to the power of innovative experimental design and the relentless pursuit of understanding the fundamental mechanisms that govern the intricate dance of life. Source. www.nature.com. Unlocking immune cell identity through lipidomes, unveiling the hidden language of immune cells, a journey through the lipidome. In the captivating realm of the immune system, a groundbreaking discovery has emerged, shedding light on the intricate identities of our body's guardians. Researchers from the University of Virginia and the Whitehead Institute have uncovered a captivating new chapter in the story of immune cell function, revealing that the unique lipid compositions, or lipidomes, of these specialized cells hold the key to their remarkable capabilities. Through the use of cutting-edge mass spectrometry techniques, the scientists have meticulously mapped the lipid landscapes of both human and mouse immune cells, cataloging an astounding array of over 500 distinct lipid species. This comprehensive lipid atlas, available at the interactive website www.cellularlipidatlas.com, serves as a remarkable resource, empowering researchers to delve into the hidden world of immune cell lipidomes. The findings unveil a remarkable diversity in the lipid compositions of various immune cell types, with myeloid cells, such as neutrophils and eosinophils, exhibiting strikingly different profiles compared to their lymphoid counterparts, including T and B cells. Myeloid cells are found to have lower levels of sphingolipids and cholesterol, but drastically high proportions of specialized lipids known as plasmalogens, as well as a reduced abundance of polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs. These distinct lipid signatures are not merely passive markers of immune cell identity, they hold profound functional implications. The team discovered that the relative abundance of PUFA containing lipids is a critical determinant of a cell's susceptibility to ferroptosis, a form of programmed cell death driven by lipid peroxidation. Lymphoid cells, rich in PUFA-laden lipids, are more vulnerable to this process, while myeloid cells, with their lower PUFA levels, are more resistant. This revelation opens up intriguing possibilities for therapeutic strategies. The researchers demonstrate that by supplementing T cells with the monounsaturated fatty acid oleic acid, their vulnerability to ferroptosis can be attenuated. This finding suggests that dietary interventions targeting the lipid composition of immune cells may hold promise in modulating their susceptibility to ferroptosis inducing agents, a concept with significant implications for cancer immunotherapy. Moreover, the study highlights the complex interplay between immune cell lipidomes and their specialized functions. The higher proportion of sphingolipids and cholesterol in myeloid cell membranes may confer distinct biophysical properties, facilitating processes such as secretion and morphological adaptations. Conversely, the abundance of PUFAs in lymphoid cells may enable enhanced membrane flexibility, aiding in immune surveillance and intercellular signaling. As the scientific community delves deeper into this uncharted territory, the implications of these findings extend far beyond the immediate realm of immune cell biology. The fundamental puzzle of why cells invest in the production of hundreds of distinct lipid species, when only a handful may suffice for basic membrane structure, remains a captivating question at the heart of membrane biology. The work of Morgan et al. has unveiled a remarkable tapestry of immune cell lipidomes, revealing how these intricate lipid landscapes define the unique identities and functionalities of our body's defenders. This pioneering research opens up new avenues for understanding the hidden language of the immune system paving the way for innovative therapeutic approaches and shedding light on the broader mysteries of cellular membranes. Source. www.nature.com. Shielding seniors, strategies to prevent heat-related deaths, weathering the storm, protecting vulnerable elders from heat-related peril. As climate change accelerates and global populations age, a pressing public health challenge has emerged, safeguarding older adults from the deadly impacts of extreme heat. A groundbreaking new study, published in Nature Medicine, sheds light on a critical factor often overlooked in heat adaptation strategies, individual physical and cognitive function. The study, led by researchers from China, examined data from over 13,500 older adults in the Chinese Longitudinal Healthy Longevity Survey. The findings were clear. It was not chronological age, but rather the level of impairment in daily living activities and cognitive abilities, that predicted the risk of heat-related mortality during heat waves. Those with the most severe limitations in basic tasks like bathing, continence, and cooking faced the highest dangers. 
These findings suggest that looking beyond the chronological age of older adults to more specific factors of individual physical and cognitive function could strengthen climate adaptation policies and clinical strategies for treatment and prevention, explains Josiah Keppert, a public health expert at Drexel University. This revelation upends the conventional approach of simply identifying older adults as a high-risk group. Instead, it calls for a more nuanced, person-centered understanding of vulnerability. As Sophia Okoye, Keppert's co-author, notes, heat adaptation programs such as cooling centers or increasing vegetation for shade will safeguard older adults with functional or cognitive limitations only if such adults have adequate information about the programs and if the programs are easily reached and interacted with, given their physical and cognitive realities. The findings underscore the critical need to prioritize accessibility in climate adaptation strategies. This means co-designing programs with disability advocates to address the unique barriers faced by those with physical and cognitive impairments. It also highlights the important role of clinicians in assessing functional status and providing personalized guidance to older patients on heat-related illness prevention. There is a critical and urgent need to move beyond chronological age alone to better understand and mitigate health risks from heat, among all individuals with disabilities and or functional limitations, irrespective of age, Keppert emphasizes. As the world grapples with the dual challenges of climate change and population aging, this study offers a vital blueprint for protecting the most vulnerable. By centering individual function, not just age, Communities can build resilience and safeguard the health and well-being of older adults facing the escalating threat of extreme heat. Source. www.nature.com. Unveiling the healing powers of food. Clinical trials showcase the health benefits of diet changes. Redefining wellness. How food can heal. In the ever-evolving landscape of healthcare, a groundbreaking shift is taking place, one that challenges the traditional boundaries of medicine. Priya Venkatesan, a renowned science journalist, delves into the burgeoning field of food as medicine, unveiling a wealth of clinical trials that showcase the remarkable health benefits of targeted dietary interventions. The evidence is clear. Our diets hold the power to prevent, manage, and even treat a wide range of medical conditions. As Daruish Mozafarian, director of the Food as Medicine Institute at Tufts University, aptly states, there are numerous diseases for which dietary changes should be prescribed as first-line treatment, according to broadly accepted clinical guidelines. Yet, the implementation of this concept has been frustratingly slow, with Mozafarian lamenting that meaningful dietary intervention very rarely happens in practice. The trials highlighted in this captivating narrative paint a compelling picture. From the DASH diet's proven effectiveness in lowering blood pressure to the Mediterranean diet's ability to reduce the risk of major cardiovascular events, the evidence is undeniable. Naveed Sattar's direct study showcases the remarkable potential of a restricted calorie total diet replacement to induce remission in individuals with type 2 diabetes, challenging the conventional wisdom that the condition is irreversible. The story extends beyond the realm of cardiometabolic health delving into the promising applications of dietary interventions in women's health and cognitive function. Endocrine disorders like polycystic ovarian syndrome and osteoporosis are areas where targeted dietary changes hold promise, while the link between diet, the gut-brain axis, and conditions like Alzheimer's disease is an emerging area of exploration. However, the path to widespread adoption of food as medicine is fraught with challenges. Venkatesan artfully navigates the complexities of conducting large-scale, randomized dietary trials, highlighting the issues of standardization, participant compliance, and the lack of diversity in study populations. The socioeconomic barriers to accessing healthy foods further compound the problem, as unhealthy processed options often remain the more affordable choice. Overcoming these obstacles will require a multifaceted approach, as Venkatesan suggests. Equitable access to nutritious foods, public health education, and policy interventions that reshape the food environment are all crucial components. As Satar aptly states, societies need to take a close look at the health promotion and treatment options we have chosen to subsidize. The narrative Venkatesan weaves is a captivating one, blending the rigorous science with the human stories that give it meaning. It is a call to action urging us to redefine our approach to healthcare and embrace the transformative power of food. In a world where non-communicable diseases continue to rise, this shift towards food as medicine holds the promise of a healthier, more resilient future for all. Source. www.nature.com
analyzing excess mortality during COVID-19 lockdowns in Thailand using mixed effects models. Unraveling Thailand's COVID-19 toll, the hidden story of excess mortality. As the COVID-19 pandemic swept across the globe, accurate mortality data became critical for understanding its true impact and guiding crisis responses. However, official death counts often fall short, failing to capture the full toll of the virus, both directly and indirectly. Thailand, a nation in Southeast Asia, faced four waves of COVID-19 between 2020 and 2021, and the country's unique approach to lockdowns, utilizing a color-coded, province-level system, offered a unique opportunity to study the pandemic's effects. Researchers from around the world have grappled with estimating excess mortality, the difference between observed and expected deaths, to paint a more complete picture of COVID-19's devastation. For Thailand, previous studies have provided estimates, but this paper takes the analysis a step further, using advanced statistical modeling techniques to account for demographic shifts, trends, and geographic variations. Employing a mixed effects Poisson model, the researchers found that Thailand experienced around 30,000 excess deaths between January 2020 and December 2021, a staggering toll that exceeds official COVID-19 death counts. The burden was not evenly distributed, with the elderly and males bearing the brunt of the excess mortality, particularly during the second and third waves. Interestingly, the researchers also uncovered periods of negative excess mortality, suggesting that the lockdown measures, while disruptive, may have had the unintended benefit of reducing deaths from other causes, such as traffic accidents. This highlights the complex interplay between the pandemic, government policies, and population health. The paper's analysis of the relationship between lockdown stringency, mobility, and excess mortality offers valuable insights. While the color-coded lockdown system was intended to restrict movement, the researchers found substantial heterogeneity in its effectiveness across time and space. Regression analyses suggest that reduced mobility was associated with lower excess mortality, but the estimates were imprecise, underscoring the challenges of establishing clear causal links. This study's significance extends beyond Thailand's borders, providing a model for how developing countries can leverage their own data to better understand the pandemic's toll. By accounting for demographic shifts and geographic variations, the researchers have produced a more nuanced and reliable estimate of excess mortality, which can inform global comparisons and guide policy decisions. As the world continues to grapple with the ongoing impacts of COVID-19, studies like this one remind us of the importance of comprehensive, localized data and rigorous analysis. Only by fully understanding the pandemic's multifaceted effects can we develop effective strategies to mitigate its consequences and better prepare for future crises. Source. www.nature.com. Unveiling the temporal succession of flesh flies during pig decomposition in the Brazilian Cerrado. Unveiling the secrets of fly succession, a forensic entomology odyssey in the Brazilian Cerrado. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the lush Cerrado landscape, a team of intrepid scientists embarked on a quest to unravel the mysteries of fly succession on decomposing pig carcasses. Their mission? To provide crucial insights that could aid in solving the most perplexing of homicide cases. In the bustling state of Maranhão, where the homicide rate has reached alarming heights, the need for innovative forensic tools has never been more pressing. Enter the flesh flies, a group of diptera that hold the key to unlocking the secrets of post-mortem intervals. These unassuming insects, with their distinct life cycles, are the focus of a groundbreaking study conducted in the Cerrado regions of northeastern Brazil. The researchers meticulously tracked the progression of fly succession on pig carcasses, carefully documenting the arrival and dominance of various species across the dry and rainy seasons. Their findings revealed a captivating dance of life and death, with certain fly species thriving in the initial stages of decomposition, while others flourished in the later phases. Through the powerful threshold indicator taxa analysis, Titan, the team identified a suite of indicator species that serve as reliable markers for estimating the post-mortem interval. These include the likes of Oxazarcodexia thornax, Pekia, Sarcodexia, Lambens, and Ravinia belforti, each with its own unique change point along the decomposition gradient. Remarkably, the researchers found that the succession patterns varied significantly between the dry and rainy seasons, underscoring the importance of tailoring forensic insights to the local environmental conditions. This discovery challenges the notion of a one-size-fits-all approach, 
highlighting the need for region-specific data to ensure the accuracy of post-mortem interval estimates. As the story unfolds, the researchers' findings hold the potential to revolutionize the field of forensic entomology in the Brazilian Cerrado. By providing a continuous analysis of the temporal succession of flies, they have opened the door to a more nuanced understanding of this intricate ecological process, ultimately aiding in the resolution of homicide cases and bringing justice to the victims and their families. This captivating tale of scientific exploration not only sheds light on the crucial role of flesh flies in forensic investigations but also underscores the importance of adapting to the unique environmental conditions of each region. As the team's work continues to ripple through the scientific community, the hope is that it will inspire further advancements in the field, ultimately contributing to a safer and more just society. Source www.nature.com